time I'm going to mark on the depth sounder what our water depth is, but I'll tell us how high we went. We're 69 feet. I think we came in at like 30 something. So that's kind of interesting. So cool. So this lock right now is using 26 million gallons of water to fill the chamber that we're in. That's a whole lot of water. That's insane. 26 million pouring in right through everywhere. So the uh, first step in the canal process is to get measured and inspected, and we have that scheduled for this morning. So basically someone from the canal authority comes and they, all they're really doing is ensuring that we're under 65 feet, because that's kind of the same fees for vessels under 65, so they'll all probably pay the same and then bigger gets more expensive. Um, I think they also verify certain things like that you have a functioning head, can the boat anchor, um, what kind of fuel burn do you use, how much fuel is on board, do you have a horn. Once the boat is measured, we have like a seven to 10 day window before we're uh, ready to go through. So that's what the like lead time is right now. So just to back up one step, um, the way we got this appointment today is through our agent. So we have been communicating with our agent via email while we were in San Blas, and that's why how we knew we had to be here in the marina today. You're not required by law to have an agent, but without one, each step of the process would be considerably lengthier and not something that can be achieved from a distance while cruising the San Blas, for example. It's like 350 bucks or something for the agent, but I think it's money well spent, so otherwise we'd be running around Cologne trying to find all these things, you know, yeah, no, chase no, down no, the... No, I don't know, my plan's not that great, <laughs> trying to chase down officials, so uh, I think this is the easiest way to do it. Yeah. So I think today we'll just start cleaning the boat and stuff. We have a lot of sand and everything, so we'll be doing that um, while we're waiting for him. I'll probably be adding. Yeah, too. it turns out living on the beach for two months gives a lot of sand everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of water. We also took incredible memories with us when we left the sand boss sailing away from the beautiful islands with our buddy boat Delos on a perfect day with just the right breeze for our colorful spinnaker sail. Go Calico! We made the passage over two days and arrived to the mouth of Shelter Bay Marina and the entrance to the Panama Canal in a much stiffer breeze and choppy seas. With large tankers everywhere, we managed to navigate into the calmer waters beyond the break wall successfully after circling around for a tanker with right of way that had upped anchor suddenly on us. so it's happening, it's pretty exciting. We're officially measured now and have come in at a whopping 42 feet, which includes six feet of what we'll call extended length, thanks to our davits and solar panels. But since all boats less than 65 feet pay the same fee, it doesn't matter to us in terms of cost. It is kind of funny though. During the meeting, the inspector confirmed that we're required by law to have four line handlers on the boat during the canal transit, which means that our friends can book their flights because with this measurement and inspection step done, we're now entered into the system and can expect to transit in seven to 10 days. Um, 
from uh, going over our engine. There's like a thousand dollar fine if you have a mechanical breakdown in the canal, so the engine's been running fine, but I figure it's time to do just preventative maintenance to change all the engine fuel filters, which we have three, Raycor, electric lift pump, and we also have a secondary diesel fuel filter. I'm also gonna change the impeller because I haven't done that in a while. So just doing some general TLC on the engine because that is gonna be our way through the canal and I wanna make sure that everything is tip top shape before we go on our crossing. First, I'm gonna check out the sea strainer. Not too bad. Next, I'm gonna go check the impeller. There it is, there's a crack right there. So I'm glad it went after this, that's a little bit of rot. This blade would have failed eventually. So that is a good thing to find. That's why you do this before, because <laughs> if that blade falls off, then it's not moving as much water. And also there's a chance that, that blade could go downstream into the heat exchanger and then that clogs the cooling system. So I'm gonna go pop a new impeller now. Next, Bill moves on to changing the fuel filters. I was gonna say that a little dirty. It's not the cleanest record I've ever seen. This is the secondary filter. There we go. Fresh filter. It's going into the lift pump. Right in there. Ah. Here. Over the next few days, we pass the time continuing to prepare for the transit, including refueling, which begins first with emptying out the remaining gas into our tank, simultaneously filtering it to remove potential contaminants before picking up Brian and his fuel jugs and heading to the fuel dock and loading up. Enough fuel jugs? I don't know, this is kind of funny. Before we know it, our date is almost here and things accelerate quickly, beginning with a visit from our agent and a very important delivery, the dock lines and fenders that we rented and will return after transiting the canal. How are you doing? Good. Well, some big boy fenders. Yeah, yeah, to make sure. <laughs> You're safe, you know? <laughs> After making our $3,000 payment, the clock ticks down and our friends begin to arrive. Hey, look at us. Both crew for Calico Skies and for Delos. Our friends Elena and Jeff. Elena! How exciting. And Bill's brother Mike will be our line handlers. Yeah, you just, we just finished putting you up. And Connor, a friend from the TTYC days. <laughs> and Ryan will be the line handlers aboard Delos. Plus Jordan, who's arrived days ago. Some practicing in there, Jeffrey? Yeah, practicing in. This is what we're doing the night before. I can do it better. Earlier, our agent explained that each line handler needs to be able to tie a bow in under pressure because that's how the heaving line will be secured to the canal line. Borrows the big day.
Crystal ball signal, crystal ball signal. Sail missile count the skies. Over. We are at the anchorage waiting for pilot. Over. Sky okay, pilot at 1600, 1600. Over. Copy that. Standing by on 1 2. How do they know where we are? That's a good question, Elena. How do they know where to meet us? We received a WhatsApp message from our Panama Canal agent providing us with a waypoint to rendezvous with our canal advisors at 1500 hours. The canal advisors are employees of the Panama Canal Authority that receive extra training to become an advisor as a side job. In this case, our advisor works Monday to Friday as a hydrographic surveyor on the canal. True pilots are only needed to guide the large ships through. Bring it up now. And the captain is on board. Pilot, keep saying captain. Pilot is on board and we are underway. It's, it's so exciting. It's just crazy because there's so much preparation and then, yeah, and there we go. Bye bye Atlantic. starboard side, our starboard side, their port side of the boat next to us, so let's look at Beneteau 48, and we're going to be handling our canal lines, our lock lines, whatever they're called, on the port side. Yeah, so we're going to have one line handler here, and one line handler up here, and then this starboard side, we're going to be tied to this boat here that we, yeah, is in front of us, so we've now... Only now do we know what's actually happening it is something we've been talking about a lot over the last couple days, and... I don't think we considered having only two boats in the nest. Um, it's usually three, but it's going to be two today. Prior to our departure for the canal, there was much chatter regarding our position in a raft up, or nest as it is called, and how it relates to line handling. Sometimes you have to put alongside a tug and there's absolutely no line handling to be performed. Other times you go center lock, being the only vessel and have to handle all four lines. Thus the need for vessels transiting the Panama Canal to have at least four line handlers. But the most likely transit will be with two or three other boats, with the boat with the largest horsepower in the center. This means only two line handlers from each boat will be needed to handle the four and aft lines. Interestingly, in the case of a three boat raft up, the middle boat will not have to handle any lines whatsoever. Once rafted, the boats move in unison and will remain tied together until the completion of the upcoming three locks, lifting us 90 feet and out of the Atlantic Ocean. Heating lines are thrown from the canal walls and secured with a bowline to lift back the large blue canal lines. We were told to not try and catch the monkey fist or the weight at the end of the heaving line, but rather let them hit the rigging and fall to the deck. I'm going to have a bola. Okay. Who wanna angle this line? Who wanna angle this line? Uh, Michael, get back here. Now, 
this line, you want to use it on the west. Yeah. Yeah. Next time I'm going to mark on the depth sounder what our water depth is. We'll tell us how high we went. We're 69 feet. I think we came in like 30 something. So that's kind of interesting. So cool. This is so much faster than I thought it was going to be. Well, it's just saying we're now in 70 feet of water. We started at like 30. Get them on forward. Get them on forward. With the first lock complete, the raft moves on to the next lock. You can hear the advisor on their larger 48-foot sailboat issuing commands for the two boats to proceed at minimum forward. The advisor on their larger boat is the one in command of the raft. The boat's actions need to be coordinated so that we remain in the center of the lock as well as parallel to its walls. Oftentimes one boat would be in reverse, the other in forward to rotate the raft, much the way a twin-screw powerboat would maneuver. I'm in So entering the second lock now, what are your thoughts so far, Mikey? Marvel of engineering. So this lock right now is using 26 million gallons of water to fill the chamber that we're in. That's a whole lot of water. That's insane. 26 million pouring in right through everywhere. Sun setting, we enter the last lock of the day and prepare to be lifted the remaining height to Lake Katun, officially 85 feet above sea level. Once we exit the final lock and untie from the nest, it becomes too dark to film. 
Luckily, there wasn't much to see. We proceed a couple miles to Lake Aton mooring area and pick up a large ship-sized mooring buoy. More like lip slash. Yeah, I don't know how to describe what's going on right now, but basically we're attached to a giant ball. A giant ball that's like it's right here. And this is what we're gonna be attached to for tonight. Pesto is almost ready. <laughs> nom nom nom, I'm hungry. Everybody's starving and it is almost eight o'clock. And I just tossed the, I pre-made the sauce and I just defrosted it. So, what did everybody think of today? Amazing. Yeah, pretty cool. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. It was amazing. Well, all the team. I thought it was harder work. It was harder work. Way harder than I thought it would be. I thought it would be easy, like tie a line, walk away. No, no, you gotta babysit that thing. Yeah, I think the line handlers, Mikey and Jeff, really had the most work. The hell that it easy. Yeah, you, you helped much. Mikey a little bit. Yeah, he helped a lot. Cause I, cause I didn't even have to drive the boat because I, all I had to do was go pop into gear like every lock yeah, once. Yeah, That's it. I wasn't even like I wasn't driving. You know what? You think well. You 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 pop that gear like a champ. I sat there and looked pretty. Yeah, no one so, pops gear like you. so we were wondering how it was up in the bow because Mikey had like a little bit. You had the winch, you had winch. for one thing, and but a wonky angle. But it was, it was, it was pretty. Yeah, good. it was all just kind of having the muscle. Join us next time as we exit the Panama Canal. Hi. Hi. It's a pretty epic experience to leave that last lock and finally enter the Pacific Ocean. And we waste no time setting out on our first official sail in this beautiful and vast body of water.